Close your eyes. With deep love, let us think of God and Sri Gurudev. Let us chant Om three times together. I bow to all the divine incarnations. I bow to all the masters of all times and all places. I bow to the divine mother. I bow to my beloved Gurudev. I bow to all of you and the entire creation. Om. Amen. It is by the grace of God and Sri Gurudev, we all have assembled here to intensify our sadhana, to keep our mind clearer and more focused. Sri Gurudev decided to come here. It was in the year 19... 96-97 and he told he will come and I will accompany him. So accordingly in New York because the Austria, Australian consulate was in New York and we were staying in Miami, Miami area. So I applied for visa. I was not really too much interested. But when Gurudev is telling to come, all right. Strange thing happened. Gurudev was unofficially resident there. I was a visitor. Normally, for a visitor to apply for a visa for another country, not easy to get the visa. I got visa for Australia. And Sri Gurudev's visa application was refused. Then I had to come here. When I was traveling in early years, and during those days also, telephone communication was quite expensive. 
first time coming to a new country, staying with new people. So I was also not calling. And Gurudev is waiting for my call. How was the trip? So one day Gurudev told, they are in Ashram. He said, he has gone, he's not calling me. How is he, what happened? Nothing. Then in Bengali, there is one expression. He told, Sadguru Vodakopal. It's the bad luck of the Guru. The disciple is not calling. <laughs> then telephone came from Sri Gurudev. When I come to Australia, sometimes I think it was all his plan. So although he could not come physically here, but he came. And people here in Australia, later on New Zealand, have devotion and sincerity for Kriya also. We have been talking about devotion, devotion, devotion. What is this devotion? In the definition of Kriya Yoga, as given by Sesh Patanjali, he said, Tapaha Swadhyaya Ishwara Pranidhanani Kriya Yoga. The simple meaning of Tapaha is path of discipline and activities. Swadhyaya, study of the path of knowledge. Ishwara Pranidhana is love for God or surrender to God. The masters describe Kriya Yoga is the integration of Action, knowledge, and devotion. Anything we do, you are looking at me, I am looking at you, but whom are we looking at? You will tell I am looking at you, you are looking at me. It is not truth. Sri Guru they have told again and again, a dead man cannot see. First you remember that you are living power of God. We all are living power of God, children of God. When we say we are children of God, sometimes people get a little scared. How can we be children of God? God is. And we have read in the New Testament, Jesus said, I am the son of God. Sometimes he said also in New Testament, I am son of man. In the Old Testament, in Torah, you will find sons of God. This concept is used, sons of God. Here, don't take this word son in our narrow mind with gender bias. Son means child. Sons of God means children of God. In the old English, it was written, man is mortal. Man is mortal. It doesn't mean that women are immortal. Man means human, all. 
So we all are children of God. Somebody told me, he told me that he loves to watch YouTube. And in YouTube, she was listening to Sri Gurudev's talk. And then he said in some of his talks, I don't know which one or what, because I don't watch so much. He said, Gurudev has told, God is remaining in the phone tunnel. And he is doing and getting things done from there. He said, it creates fear in me. The person is telling it creates fear in me. I said, why fear? If God is near, God is with you, why fear? We ordinarily, the humans, live with perpetual fear. Do you know what is fear? The example is given with the dialogue between a baby rabbit and the mother rabbit. One early in the morning, in a very solitary place, sun is rising. The baby rabbit is running here and there. And the baby kept its body facing in the opposite direction of the sun. So he, the baby saw a shadow. When sun is below, the shadow is big. Now the baby got scared and wanted to run away and keeping the back to the sun. Wherever the, it is running and the shadow is following and got so scared without thinking of anything, ran to the mother and, you know, panting. And, what happened to you? Ghost. Where is ghost? Black ghost following me everywhere, trying to chase me. See, mother knew. Mother said, show me where the ghost. Before the baby wanted to show the ghost, the mother said, do one thing. Face the sun. And the rabbit faced the sun. Where is your ghost? Said, no, nowhere. Because the shadow was behind him. Because he faced the sun. We have fear. We don't have courage to face God. There is a devotional song in Hindi. Maili chadar odh pe keshe dwar tihare aun he pavana parameshwara mere manahi mana sarmau putting on dirty clothes. Oh my beloved, oh my lord, how can I come to your presence? When I look at me, look at my condition, so miserable. I feel myself ashamed, guilty. It is a common person's feeling. You think, think of a mother and the mother's child. The child is dirty, playing somewhere or even some. Near the mother is the child dirty. The child is sick. Near the mother, is the child sick? No. Mother lifts up the child, holds the child, cleans the child. And even if the child may, becomes dirty again, the mother is not tired of. Do you know, God is more loving than our earthly mother. God is more caring, more forgiving. And that is why God is. Think what happens if you, it is not a criticism. In some holy books, it is written, God punishes. Here comes the fear. Really, God doesn't punish. Our own karma brings the result. It is not God. God never punishes. God loves. God is pure love unimaginable love, God. 
So we have to keep our mind completely clear. The word devotion in Sanskrit, it is called as bhakti. What is in Sanskrit? Bhakti. Bhakti comes from a root verb. Sanskrit is a very uh, special language. It is not like English. You will say, what happened with English? In English, we don't have too much of specific rule, just like for sound. P U T. What is it? Put. B U T. But you see the same syntax P U T, B U T. C U T, but the sound is changing. Why? Why there is no Sanskrit is the more systematic, logical, and very, very deep rooted language. Each sound. Why this? Why this? It's it's really interesting. Sometimes I feel a little bit sad and bad. Do you know why? I could have studied Sanskrit a little more. I know little, but it is like ocean. However, come to bhakti. The word bhakti comes from the root verb bhaj. From the root verb bhaj comes bhakti. Bhaj has many uses, many <coughs> meanings. One meaning of bhaj is to sing. One meaning of bhaj is to sing. You might have heard the name, even in West they also tell bhajan, devotional singing, devotional chanting, they call us bhajan. Bhaj means to sing, to chant. Another meaning of bhaj, to serve. Bhaj means to serve. We all are sitting here. Now tell me, who is serving whom? Suppose in this class, who is serving? Tell me. So this fellow sitting in your front is serving. Trying to serve as much as he could. So I'm serving. Do you know? Once Gurudev said, People think, I'll serve Guru, I'll serve God, but who serves really? He said, God is the best servant. Who? God is the best servant. This sentence sounds a little bit. He said, look, you are tired. You lie down on the bed. You relax. God within you is continuously breathing. Isn't God breathing, breathing within you day and night? Serving in you day and night? You took food. You had nice lunch. But God within you is digesting your food continuously. If you think God from this aspect in our life, isn't God serving us day and night? One meaning of bhaj is to serve. Third meaning of bhaj is to worship. Worship. Fourth meaning of bhaj is to divide, to separate, to break. Bhaj. So now I am coming to the last meaning and then we will come to other meaning from this bhads coming bhakti, the last meaning to break, to separate, to divide. You will say, then bhakti is separation, bhakti is division. There is one Sanskrit word very commonly used in many languages in India. And it is also used in 
mathematics in Indian language. It is called as Vibhakta Vibhakti. Suppose 6 divided by 2. We put a line in mathematics. 6 by 2. In Indian languages, they tell 6 Vibhakta 2. Vibhakta means divide. So, Vibhakti, you can hear the sound, those who do not know Sanskrit. Vibhakti, Bhakti. They are very close to each other. One is with a prefix B. Bhakti, Vibhakti, Vibhakti is division. And Bhakti, so it sounds too different. Here the master's tale, division is bhakti, indivisibility is bhakti, division is devotion, indivision is also devotion, you will say confused. Division is devotion is there. When I will look at myself, I will find in myself, I have some good qualities. But I have also some bad qualities. Oh, lying down on bed, so pleasant. Do you know, coming from India to here, India is four and a half hours behind. Early in the morning at 3.30, 4 o'clock, it is closer to midnight. In India, the body clock tells, lie down. Then the consciousness tells, no. Who is looking at you if you lie down? Who is complaining that you are lying down, getting up late? Lie down. Then inner <laughs> discipline is telling, no. Am I clear? Because mind is used to this time, no matter where I am. So we know our own weaknesses. Ordinary people, they cover up the weaknesses. They show their goodness for themselves. But for others, they do the reverse. They don't look at their good things. If there is anything not nice, they highlight. Oh, he, he is like this. She, she does that. And so on. So, Bhakti is division. First divide within yourself between right and wrong. Remove wrong. It is a gradual process. Nobody will be overnight, you know, I slept and next morning I have long beard, long hair. No. It takes time. Little effort is needed. So, Bhakti is coming from the root verb, bhaj, means to divide. Now again, vibhakti is bhakti, vibhakti. Division is bhakti, indivisibility. Indivisibil indivisibility is also devotion. You will say how? The one who is, who is within me, the same one is within One who is in me, same one. There is, Gurudev said, there is no non-God in the world. Meaning, you can't say anybody who is bad. God is in that person. The snake and the mouse. The snake and the mouse. In snake there is God, in the mouse there is God. Being a lover of Ahimsa, if you tell, oh snake, be kind. Don't eat this poor mouse. The snake will tell, gentleman, I will accept you, but give me some food. I want to eat. There is a story from the Mahabharata. It is not a story. Remember, in the Mahabharata, in the Ramayana, although we tell it is a story or episode, it happened. 
during those days, people knew the language of animals. Few years ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago or more, somebody showed me a person understanding the language of the dog and communicating. Very interesting. Able to understand and communicating. However, if you have read about Buddha, Buddha knew the language of animals. So during those times, people knew with purity in mind, with love for nature, we can develop that quality in us. However, the king is sitting in the court with all the people, ministers, and a tiny bird came flying from nowhere, sat on the lap of this king and was panicked. The king looked at this little sparrow or little bird and told, my friend, my, you are my guest, no fear. Why you are so scared? In no time, a hawk came and sat in the front, offered its respect to the king and told, please leave this bird, I'm hungry. It is my prey, I want to eat. The king said, my, you are also my guest. I cannot. The hawk said, you are, you are a person of justice. It is my food, natural food. He said, yes, I understand, but I cannot give this bird. I'm hungry, give me food. Do you know what he said? He said, all right, I will give you flesh, the weight of this tiny bird. What he did, he brought a scale. On this scale, on one side, this tiny bird. On the other side, he cut himself from his thigh. A chunk, put it. The bird is becoming heavier. He's cutting another chunk. The bird is heavier. Another chunk. So the king stopped. Something unbelievable, unimaginable. Do you know what he did? He sat on the other side, ate me. The scene changed. The hawk was not a hawk. And this bird was not a tiny bird. The hawk was the lord of justice, the lord of value. And told the king, we came to see that how honest you are. And the king was healed, the bird went away. If we look at this creation, in this creation, we judge, this is this, this is this, this is this. So love or devotion is to see the individual presence of the divine everywhere. For your personal understanding, divide. This is not good, I will not entertain it. But for my own perception everywhere, I should feel united with all, that is why the masters say, if you cannot see God in all, you cannot see God at all. We want to see God in the temple. Very nice. Do you know in many families, they have a puja room. Nice altar, they decorate. Beautiful. But in the other room, in puja room you sing and pray, in other room you quarrel and fight. It is not devotion. It is not indivisibility. So you keep God enclosed in the puja room, be here, be happy, but not in the living room, not in the kitchen, not in the bedroom. Bring God to everywhere. So bhakti from the root for bhaj, one is to sing, 
to pray, to chant, one is to serve, one is to take refuge. Here I will tell a little bit more and then we will go to the text. Because somebody asked about surrender, surrender. Who takes surrender near whom? Who accepts refuge or shelter near whom? In the battle, I am tired. I lift up my hand. They tell in battlefield, surrender. Don't surrender near your enemies. My anger is my enemy. My ego is my enemy. Fault finding nature is my enemy. Going back to old memory is my enemy. I will never raise up my hand. They are my enemy. A child lifts up the hand. Near whom? Near the mother. Near the father. Near the brother. That means lift me up. I will surrender near somebody who will lift me up, not pull me down. And who is that? Be very clear. Who can lift me up? God. God can lift me up. He. So, near whom to surrender? Surrendering near God. You will ask, I don't know God. Don't you know love? Can there anybody who will tell that I don't know what love is? If one doesn't know what love is, one cannot sleep because you love your bed. <laughs> Some people love their pillow. You can't tell, but I don't know what love is. You love your food. Can, is there anybody who will tell that I don't know love is? What love is? Yes, we know, but little. If you know little, 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 the sum total of all love, even beyond, is God. God is love. God is forgiveness. God is ever ready to... Sri Gurudev's Gurudev, Vijaya Krishna, who was his guru in his child, teenage. In one of his teachings, he said, this, in form of the dialogue between the devotee and God, Oh God, why did you take so long to come to me? I have been praying, I have been praying. Then God is telling, do you know, I have been waiting for you lives after lives. I have been waiting for you lives after lives, but you ignored me. You looked at the world, you looked at pleasure, you looked at tempting things, you were, you were busy in I was patiently waiting. When you leave all the toys, all the fun, you will run towards me. Can you imagine? God as the extremely loving, caring, compassionate mother has been waiting for each one of us. But how intensely do we really love God? However, come back to our discussion, the, this discussion between Lord Rama and Sabari. Today I was looking at Valmiki Ramayana. This Sabari discussion, which we are discussing, it is from Ramacharita Manusa. In Valmiki Ramayana, one word adjective, or the one way the Lord Rama is addressing, that few words are there, but I will tell one to. One is tapodhana. What is the word? Tapodhana. It is Sanskrit word. Oh, tapodhana. Lord Rama is asking. Tapo means meditation, penance, austerity, self-discipline, action, tapo. Self-mortification, tapo. Tapodhana is poor lady who is rich with the treasure of tapas. Who is the Lord Himself is telling this Sabari, O oh, the one 
which is rich with tapas, rich with penance, rich with austerity, rich with self-discipline. Can you imagine? If God addresses this lady as tapodhana, what type of lady she was? And it is not just praising. And it is truth. When the Lord is telling, O oh, Sabari, I am going to talk to you about nine forms of devotion. And devotion or love is very dear to me. Yesterday we started, it is in Hindi poetic form. Prathama bhagati santana karu sangha dusari rati mama katha prasanga. The first is good companion. The first is, O oh, Sabari, you are experienced in good company. How? A good thought came to you and that brought, brought a turning point in your life. On the day of marriage, when people are busy of dreaming of their life of enjoyment, pleasure, you just turn your face from marriage to run away. Who can do this? This thought. A good thought is a good company. A good thought is a good company, but what happens in our life, most of the time we, instead of multiplying our good thoughts, good thought comes, goes away, bad thought comes, because after good, bad will come. I was telling somebody that, look, do not waste your time. And that I have been practicing. I'll not tell that I'm perfect in this, but I'm, I've been practicing not to waste time. Why to waste time? Time is so precious. Lazy mind, idle mind is devil's workshop. If I become a little bit idle, unproductive, unspiritual, devil will dance in my heart, in my mind. Why should I allow devil to come into me? So every moment, and Kriya Yoga is so simple. Every breath, oh God. So very, a thought in you became good and you stick to that thought. You started running from your home and you found this hermitage. Then you lived here. Again, you had good company. Company of the holy people. Company of good people company of good thought, it is like a fence, protecting wall that will protect us and our life from all types of evils. Do not, Guru Dev said, Guru Dev said, this beard is a protection. When I was little young, my friends were making fun of me because I didn't get beard. They all were having beard, me no. So being persuaded by, by my friends, I tried to, you, you know, nothing was happening. Friends company. When I stayed at home, I was really protected. I'm talking of my home where I grew up. At the age of 16, 17, when I left home and stayed with my friends in hostel, boarding house. So there was freedom. Any little vices I had, it was during that time. I'm talking of myself. Thank God, by God's grace, it was only for a very, very short time. Then I became, you know, my food, my lifestyle, everything I got changed after this short duration. But company, as is the company, so is the impact. Do you know, one person was addicted to smoking. Smoking means not just cigarette, something more. 
in india they love to have a team and to smoke so one was in a new town and he wanted to find a friend so how to find friend he was thinking then what he did he was walking keeping this hand up another person coming there there is enough space he said why you are obstructing me there is enough space but he is keeping the hand do you smoke how could you know i was searching for you <laughs> keeping my hand like this and walking means one will shake a hand with me and you told this that means this and down i was young how young 29 30 i was in the kumbh mela stayed for a month in the kumbh mela so i was going to have some holy company i went to some sadhus very really great sadhus i heard at one place i stopped i saw it is written even in hindi odia bengali like this all boards are written this big crowd and lot of white people i thought must be big sadhu i went in to know what did i see people are smoking one gentleman wester he looked at me he could feel that i am not of that group do you love to smoke i said no don't stay here so i bent my head and left the place so people of same nature same characters birds of same feathers flock together and that happened that happens everywhere why did you come here you must be do not thakur ramakrishna paramhansa said one example in india people love to have wild mangoes but to come to your home frequently so there is a simple trick you try to catch the mangoes and give a little even smaller than mustard seed opium that's all the next day it will come at the same time it is not good but they do they did now it is it is all forbidden by law so what happens those who good company is also like intoxication but this intoxication intoxication is not harmful it is spiritual intoxication to be intoxicated without intoxicant is good company i'll tell you one incident i was new in europe one meditation class so all are sitting sit straight close your eyes and so on one person sitting with eyes open and staring at me i was feeling uncomfortable two three times you will tell if if you tell repeatedly others will be disturbed after the meditation i asked the person a question he said yes do you take drugs yes how could you know it <laughs> i told it is not good it is not good for after few weeks the same person came back do you know one thing has happened i told to meditate meditate meditation will make you free from all these habits and that person took it very literally and faithfully after few weeks when coming back told me i'm so happy that i stopped it and i was also feeling happy do you know in our life if we think anything bad we have learned it is through some company it can be company of even nowadays mobile telephone or television or movie it can be company or people so be careful 
what sabari the first step to devotion is good company and you have availed it in good company what will happen when some good people will see it what will they do they will they will sing they will chant they will talk stop something which is good or do something which is good prathama bhagati samthama karu sanga dusari rati mama katha prasanga do you know when people sit together when they have to talk they talk about god talk about goodness talk about some good thing and that's all and only good company is yes, you are with good people but then do, doing something good and the easiest way to do something good is to first to listen listening to the lives of saints and sages listening to lives of divine incarnations it was during christmas new year time i was in west in europe so normally during christmas new year times i spoke on jesus every day satsang speak on jesus how he was born what happened with better understanding i spoke jesus in the arm of mother mary i was describing just like krishna in the arms of mother jasoda it the same do you know all divine incarnations they are same years after i went to palestine in palestine i found a cave which is a pilgrim site for um, christians so there is a traditional belief that mother mary stayed there in the cave for some time for a while and she was he was breast feeding jesus and a drop of her milk fell in that cave this is the people's and the cave is is white rock like chalk something so people they go and scrap it and scrub, taking a little bit of that words you know white stone the belief it has healing power then i thought when i was talking of jesus in the arms of mother mary the mother's love jesus smile and here i found a place people believe that jesus was there with mother mary and the mother mary was feeding jesus and so on do you know when i came to west and i came in 1994 this is the 50th year of sri gurudev's coming to west so in 1994 i was completely new my gurudev did not tell what to teach how to teach nothing he just brought me and i thought instead of speaking on the gita or the upanishad it is better to speak on the bible I don't know what happened i asked everybody you might have all because I, it was my understanding or imagination that everybody must be reading the bible because they are the, i asked i hope you all have been reading the bible most of them said no it was really big shock for me what you don't read the bible they say is there anything good in it <laughs> somebody said oh in our school we had little bit i read that this type of vague answer so i was really really sad within i was born in india i was born in a hindu family i was born in a brahmin's family i got the opportunity to read the bible i loved it and here people they don't read the thing the problem is not with these people those who do not read the problem is we have not given them the right way of understanding it 
our family or our society or our it is do you know what happened i said okay from today onwards i'll go on talking on the from the bible so they started loving to listen because they loved me and when i was talking and i talked some practical aspect some inner meaning every day before meditation five minutes not too much not hours a little bit from the bible one thing and let us meditate do you know what gurudev did gurudev used to see what i am doing sometimes he will come very quietly and will listen then one day he called me to his room he said i am listening to your talk it's very nice why don't you write it down good company the first step listen discuss about the life of the divine incarnations it but many times we even the children love to listen if we can present them in a nice way do not they start i was really happy when i saw that everybody came with the bible when i started talking from the bible i said this is in this chapter this verse immediately they were opening it and looking at that chapter and i was really happy to see that and you know spirituality transcends the boundary of religions it has nothing to do with you are a christian be a good christian one is a hindu be a good hindu that is what sri lahidi mahasu said but meditate so spirituality teaches much more than this religious dogma religious dogma like this प्रथम भगती संथन कर संगा दुसरी रति मम कथा प्रसंगा द फर्स्ट इज गुड कंपनी सेकंड इज लव टू लिसन टू द स्टोरी ऑफ द डिवाइन नाउ ही इज टेलिंग व्हाट इज थर्ड गुरुपद पंकज सेवा तीसरी भगती अमान गुरुपद पंकज सेवा तीसरी भगति अमान ओ सबरी व्हेन यू आर इन गुड कंपनी व्हेन यू लिसन टू गुड टॉक्स गुड आइडियाज गुड डिस्कशन स्लोली योर माइंड विल थिंक आई नीड ए गाइड हु कैन रियली हेल्प मी दिस इज थर्ड स्टेप आई नीड ए गाइड सो द गाइड इन द क्लासिकल संस्कृत लिटरेचर इट इज कॉल्ड एज गुरु don't be scared with the word guru in india we had we called the primary school teacher guru university professor guru spiritual teacher is also guru we had teachers day in english we call teachers day 5th september in india and we call guru divas in our language with day for the guru guru doesn't mean that he should have beard and this from whomever we learn something good so as i told you my primary school teacher is guru i will tell you some thought came to me in 2012 in 2012 i went for some time in silence and seclusion then one day the thought came to me really all my teachers those who have taught me from primary school till university even some people who i love them they are great professors great teachers why can't i have a get together of all them all of them and i want to bow to them that was my thought just to bring then i sat down and typed the names of my teachers from primary school 
primary school, middle school, high school, two years of college, undergraduation, post-graduation, and so on. So it became 160 plus names I remembered. I have a friend. First, I told this friend about this wish in my mind. And that friend was very enthusiastic. He told, I'll do for you. Just give me the names. I'll search for them. Because we need the address. We have to contact them. So it took time. It was, I think, in 2015, we had this get together in our balasram, the school. You can't imagine that day and that picture, I can never forget. One of my teachers who was in 90s, 95, 96 coming, body is bent, but he has gone. I washed their feet offered flower at their feet. I bowed at their feet. They were reluctant to see me bending my body, head and bowing. And some were blessing. They, it was so beautiful. Guru is not a human being. Guru is a principle. Guru is an ideal. Guru is an object of adoration. Guru can be human and non-human. There is a book, we have our ashram publication. It is from the Bhagavatam. In the Bhagavatam, when Abhadhuta, the naked monk, is asked by the king, Yadu, that who, are, who is your guru? He said, I have not one guru, I have many. The title of the book is My Gurus. How many gurus? So among the gurus, he's telling, the bee is my guru, the python is my guru, the, the prostitute is my guru. <laughs> like this, he gave a list. They're my gurus. From whomever, wherever I learned something good, he's my guru. It is said that if one is open-minded and ready, can learn from anybody, anywhere, and from anything. If one is having block, one cannot. Lord Rama is telling, Guru Pada Pankaja Seva Tishari Bhagati Aman Guru, Guru Pada the feet. Pankaja, Pankaja means the lotus. Seva, to serve. Tishari Bhagati, the third form of devotion. Amana. Amana means free from ego, free from pride, serve. It is said, serve at the feet of the Guru. Now the people get confused. People thought feet of the Guru means sit at the feet. Then feet of the Guru means give little massage. This is completely misunderstanding. Serving the Guru, be very clear. Do you know what is serving the Guru? Follow the teachings. Apply it in your daily life. Be as your teacher wants to be. That is the real Seva. Here the Lord is telling, Amana, be free from ego. Be free from pride and serve. Serve Guru Pada Pankaja Seva. Pankaja means the lotus. Inside the body, inside the cranium, between these two chakras, Agnya and Sahasrara, there is a hidden chakra known as Guru Paduka chakra. There is the place of the feet of the Guru in between here and here. Through meditation, one can perceive the presence of God, presence of Guru within. And that is what the real meaning to follow. Here, the Lord is telling Sabari, first you had good company. Then you listen to the glory of the divine. Then you accepted 
Rishi Matanga as your guru, near whom you felt fearless, and the guru assured you, don't think of anything, you are my child, follow what I am telling. And you followed him. Pishari Bhagati Pradhan will discuss the rest tomorrow. Let us close our eyes for a moment. With deep love, let us think of God and Sri Gurudev. Let us pray to God and Sri Gurudev. Give us inner strength. I am your child. I will be a good seeker. I will remove all my weaknesses. I will be strict to myself. I will bring discipline into my life. And in every breath, I will feel I am yours and yours forever. Let us meditate for a few seconds quietly. We'll chant Mahamrutanja Mantra five times together for the peace, well-being and health of those who are suffering even in the entire universe. Om Trayambakam Jajamahe Sugandhim Pushtivardhanam Urvaruka Mivabandhanam Vrityor Mukhiyam Amrutat Om Trayambakam Jajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvaruka Mivabandhanam Mrityur Mukhiyam Amrutat Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvaruka Mivabandhanam Mrityur Mukhiyam Amrutat Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushtivardhanam Urvaruka Mibabandhanam Mrityur Mukhiyam Amrutat Om Trayambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushtivardhanam Urvaruka Mibabandhanam Mrityur Mukhiyam Amrutat Om Santi Santi Sarbe Bhavantu Sukhina Sarbe Bhavantu Sukhina Sarbe Santu Niramaya Sarbe Bhatrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschit Dukkha Bhag Bhavet Om Santi 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 I bow to God I bow to all the divine incarnations I bow to the Divine Mother. I bow to all masters of all times and all places. I bow to my beloved Gurudev. I bow to all of you and the entire creation. I pray for peace, progress and prosperity everywhere. Om. Amen.